Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you one of the main features of formula auditing in Excel. Basically how to figure out what other cells are referenced within formulas in your worksheet. And if you'd like to get this workbook go to teachexcel.com and you can download it there. Now I'm using the same workbook that I used for the functions and formulas in Excel 9 tutorial. And that's where we figured out how to highlight all the cells in a worksheet that contain formulas without using a macro. So this was the end result and now I'm just going to continue that. Um, the premise of this is that I worked on this workbook a long time ago and I don't remember what uh, everything points to or how it all, how it all works right but you can also use it if you have error formulas or errors in the formulas so I'm gonna zoom in real quick and focus on B or actually back up a little bit alright so we got a lot of stuff going on here right and the last thing I have is the stock price so I want to visually find out where the stock price goes now if I look in the formula bar I can see that right but you know I see cell references and it's much easier if I could visually see where it's pointing to because I don't want to always have to reference the columns and the numbers on the left. So to do that go to the formulas tab and make sure you select the cell with the formula that you want to um, understand I guess you could say and then go to formula auditing. So you're on the formulas tab formula auditing now you have a bunch of different options here and I'm gonna go through those in later tutorials right now what we want to do is to trace precedence so you can see if I hover over it it says that that shows arrows to indicate what cells affect the value of the currently selected cell so when I click the button we can automatically see arrows that point from the cells that affect this formula cell here now it's important to note that it looks like there's only one arrow coming up here from the present value column that's incorrect because if I highlight the formula I can see that it's E15 to E19 simply all the arrows overlap each other so notice that uh, you have to be careful just to make sure so you don't think only one cell is being affected here now let's go over here to the market cap rate market capitalization rate do the exact same thing. I want to trace precedence to see where it's coming from. Oh, okay. So I see right over here. We have the risk-free rate, market risk premium, and the beta. These three cells affect this cell right here and get you to this formula. Now let's go ahead and get the stock price down here for year 2013 to figure out where that one goes. Simply select the cell, click trace precedence, and we can see very clearly that it comes from cell I 16, 20, and 19. So you can see that this will help you to evaluate what actually creates your formulas or what gives you the numbers for them really. Now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more to fit everything in screen. So this worksheet actually has a lot of things on it to explain what everything is, right? I got the formulas down here right here but um, in the real world you're probably not gonna have those formulas what this is gonna let me know now is that these three cells are cells that I cannot delete because it affects this formula these cells here are cells I cannot delete because it affects this formula so that's what I would say the most important thing is that you know what cells you can and can't delete when you're cleaning up a spreadsheet and you know what cells affect other cells in the spreadsheet for instance, I could have a few different market risk premiums listed up here, and I want to know which one actually affects this one visually. So I want to know exactly where the source data comes from here. And that's why you're going to do the trace precedence. Now I got a bunch of arrows up here, and uh, I know where everything goes, so let's get rid of the arrows. All you have to do is on the formulas tab, formula auditing box, go ahead and click remove arrows. When you do that, all of the arrows in the worksheet are going to be automatically removed. Now here's another thing. So I know that this formula here uses this cell's market risk premium, right? But are there any other cells that use this market risk premium? I want to know exactly what it affects. You know, maybe whoever created this worksheet did it incorrectly, it needs to use a different one. So I'm going to highlight the cell and then go up to trace dependence. 
Now, as you can see, it says show arrows that indicate what cells are affected by the value of the currently selected cell. Well, there's only one cell. So we can see that the uh, number in this cell affects only the formula for the market capitalization rate. Now let's do the same thing for the risk-free rate. So select the cell, go to trace dependence. And we see that also only has to do with this cell right here. And so similarly, you can do that with however many other cells you want. It doesn't have to be a cell that only has a solid value in it. It could be a cell with a formula like this one. Trace dependence, see where it goes to. You can see that uh, this formula is relied on by this formula here. Once again, you want to remove the arrows. Simply click the remove arrows box. And also, you can have um, tracing the precedence and then let's say trace dependence over here on the same sheet. It's important to note that the circle indicates, so we got a circle and then an arrow on one end, right? The circle indicates sort of the starting point or the value that is relied on by another value. So there's a circle here because this value is used in this formula. Circles up here because these values are used in this formula. So if you have a bunch of precedence and dependence with arrows on here, that's how you can tell what's what. So that's about it for all you need to know related to tracing precedence and dependence. I'm going to remove all of the arrows once again. And this is just another step in helping you to understand a spreadsheet that you haven't used in a long time or that someone else sent you and you're just not sure what goes where or what is um, what cell relies on another cell basically. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you'd like to get this workbook, go to teachexcel.com and you can download it there.